What is the Nephilim? I'm glad you asked. Because it's in the Bible. In the Hebrew Bible and several non-canonical Jewish and early Christian writings, the Nephilim in Hebrew means the falling ones. Are, they are the people created by the crossbreeding of the sons of God and the daughters of men. It's in Genesis 6. We'll read it in a minute. The word Nephilim is loosely translated as giants or titans, and in some Bibles, it is left untranslated. This is the reason why we don't understand what the Bible's about, because this word Nephilim was translated improperly. There was no word, so they, the King James translators translated in the closest they could translate it, which was giants. So when you say giant, you're thinking of a tall, big person. But the Nephilim was not just giants, but the Bible calls them giants. But the Bible says they were giants, but the word was translated from Nephilim to giant. Are y'all there? The word Nephilim means the fallen ones or the ones that fell. Come on. Okay. Okay. Genesis 6, verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born to them that the sons of Elohim, the sons of God, sons of God, saw the daughters of men were beautiful, and they took, them for, took wives for themselves uh, of all whom they chose. Now, the sons of God is the same. When it talks about the sons of God, it's not talking about men. Say amen. Because the sons of God, the, the term sons of God really meant angel. So the sons of God, when the Bible, when in Job, when God asked Job, were you there when the sons of God sang when I created the earth? He started talking about men were not there. He's talking about angels were there. Lucifer was there. There was angels there when he created the earth. So God had created a, a being, a, God had created a race of spirit beings. They were called the sons of God. The Bible, listen, this is important. The Bible says that when the women, they saw the earth women, they began to lust after them. And they came down because their job was to watch the earth or watch over it. Are y'all there? Oh, boy. Paradigm shift. Are y'all there? Are y'all there? Now, see, we jump over Genesis 6 like we go on to the flood. We have no idea the reason for the flood. It was because of wickedness. But what kind of wickedness? What was going on that God would destroy his creation? Think about this. See, all we say is sin, and that's why we got this argument about Sodom and Gomorrah, because we're only talking about sin. But what they were doing was not what God was talking about. It wasn't just the sexual sin that was part of it. But these, these, these Nephilim, these angels began to mate with women, and God cursed them for that and that's why Jude says that remember there was he was talking about the, the ones that did not keep their first estate but they are now reserved in chains the ones that did this it was 200 of them that did this and they in the place called Taratus which is the bottomless pit they're reserved for judgment oh boy are y'all there come on say a paradigm shift now, the next study we're going to do is on the book of Enoch. I'm not going to talk about it today, but I want to give you a little background because you need to understand why the book of Enoch's not in the Bible. Are y'all there? There are hundreds of manuscripts that were written by eyewitness people that are not in the Bible. The Bible was comprised by the Council of Laodicea. The Council of Laodicea was a lot of scholars that got together and decided, decided what would be in the Bible and what wouldn't. Say amen. amen. The book of Enoch is the same book that Jude, the book before Revelations, alludes to when he, he quotes Enoch talking about how God is going to bring 10,000 of his angels and destroy men who operate in unrighteousness. Jude's quoting Enoch. Say amen. amen. Other people are quoting Enoch throughout the Bible. So the early fathers, the early Christian fathers, the book of Enoch was a part of their life. They knew it. Paul knew the book of Enoch. Peter knew the book of Enoch. Say amen. But the, but the council of Laodicea decided not to put the book of Enoch in. Now, the book of Enoch, I don't have time to, I'm going to show you next time. It talks about the angels, the fallen angels. 
Because if you look at Genesis 6, oh, I'm teaching, I'm going to teach y'all something. If you look at Genesis 6, there seems to be something missing right there. Like the sons of God came to the daughters of men and, and giants were produced. Listen, for there were Nephilim on the earth in those days. Now, I thought we was talking about men. Well, we knew men were on earth because they was having daughters, right? Nephilim is describing the fallen ones. They were on the earth. Most of the movies you've seen, they have this theme, the same theme. The Transformer movie had the same theme. Most of the movies have the same theme because we're being conditioned for which was to be come back. Paradigm shift. That's why you're getting prepared for aliens and all this stuff. Don't think this, all this superhero stuff because the Nephilim were called heroes. They were called the men of renown, the men of old. This is where all the Greek gods came from. They were, the Greek gods were not just mythical people. They were people of the, of the Nephilim, the giants. And they worshipped them. Are y'all there? So Jesus says, it'll be just like in the days of Noah when I come. Come on, boy, get your mind out. This is why God only showed up to destroy the earth twice. Well, he came once and he's going to come again. And it's only one reason he did it. He loved his creation. But the Nephilim created a race also. Oh, boy. Let me show you. Okay. Uh, there were Nephilim on the earth in those days and also afterward. Listen, listen, remember, listen. This is before the flood, right? There were Nephilim on the earth in those days and also afterward. It's talking about after the flood too. Come on. Why did God destroy the earth? Because the, the angels that he had created to watch over the earth start, came down and had sex with, 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 with the women and created another race, say man, of, of half human. They were marked by, gig by gigantism. As a matter of fact, remember it says they were in those days and afterward. So after the flood, that DNA was still in the earth. They did it again. That's where Goliath comes from. They marked the, these, these, the Nephilim, the offspring of the fallen angels. Oh, boy. The, the offspring, they was marked because they had six fingers on both hands and six toes. And they were all giants. Say amen. Can we keep going? Have I blown you so far? Have I got your mind out there? Yes. Trying to, trying to get you out there. Y'all there? Now, come on, y'all, y'all. Now, now, say Why? Come on, say why. Why did this happen? Are y'all there? I don't have time to go there because I got to close. In Genesis chapter 3, Satan, which we call the serpent, say amen. The serpent is not what he is. That's his nature. Slithery, slick, sneaky, really means whisperer. That's his job. He came up to the woman and the Bible says, now, I had to revise my understanding here because I said, wait a minute now. Satan transformed himself as an angel of light. Come on. Are y'all there? But in, anyway, he talks to the woman and tells the woman about the tree. And, you know, the woman, he deceives her. The Bible says in Peter, the woman was the beguiled or tricked. He tricked her to eat it, which they fell from grace or glory. God kicked them out of the garden. But before he kicked them out, he pronounced a prophecy. This is what this is over, y'all. What was the prophecy? That one day, he told the woman, the seed, he told the serpent, the seed of the woman is going to crush or bruise your head. I mean, going to crush your head. You're going to be biting at his heel, but what's coming through the wound man is going to stand on your head. Come on. So Satan know God is God. He's not going to, he can't lie. So he knew from that point on, he knew that God had to use the, at the fallen creation, which was Adam and Eve, to bring a seed out of that would one day be the one 
to, to crush, to bruise his head, to crush his head. Say amen. amen. So Satan understood that there's a law, oh y'all, come on. There's a law that you can't enter into this realm, this natural realm, this three-dimensional realm where you have the, the flesh, the body, unless you be born through the woman. That's why Satan knew God, you can't come. That's why when he seen Jesus, they, he, came, he said, Jesus, you are you unlawful. You ain't supposed to be here to God. When God deal with me, God got to come through a woman. So he knew that the Messiah, the Savior, the Redeemer of man would come through the woman. So the plan was hatched to destroy the bloodline. Not just to, uh, not just to make the seed unrighteous. Listen, oh, listen. But to take the bloodline with demon DNA. See, it wasn't just enough for the unrighteousness. He wanted to, because, because you know, now with scientists have figured, ain't this somehow God knew that God was, but scientists just figured this out. That all your genetic makeup's in, this, in the DNA. Say amen. So you can't just escape your DNA. So when the, so the devil said, I know what I'll do. He deceived, the Bible says, what did he do? He deceived one third of the angels. And he got them to go and have sex and begin to have offspring with the women. To do what? To defile the bloodline. Because the offspring of the Nephilim were so evil, they were violent. The Bible says violence filled the earth and God repented that he had made man. So God said, I'm going to destroy them because there's only one man that don't have this DNA. It was Noah. Noah didn't have that bloodline. So that's why the Bible said he was right. And we thought Noah was right because he lived right. But we know Noah didn't live right because after the flood, Noah got drunk. So he wasn't necessarily righteous. But his blood was pure. Oh, y'all, this is... This is why the power of the blood of Jesus is so great. It's not just something we say. His blood was so pure that it wasn't tainted by evil. That's why Jesus says Satan is coming, but he ain't got nothing in me. That's nothing. I have none of his DNA. So when God sees the shed blood of Christ, he sees nothing but pure life. That's why the blood of man cannot redeem us because we were all sinful. This is why we talk about the power of the blood. Ain't no game. When you say the power of the blood, you're saying something. Demons know. That's why the, Jesus said life is in the power of the blood. So he, he, no, we thought he meant that power, power, one. We thinking that. No, he means if you get down and, and scientists have seen blood on the molecules, it's light. Blood is light. Blood is not red. What turns blood red is this world. It's oxygen. Blood is white. It's clear. It's light. So Jesus said the power of life is really in the blood. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. In him was life. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Oh, boy. I'm jumping off. Hallelujah. That's why we love him when we understand who he really was. Say amen. Okay, let me, let me get on. I'm not, I told you I ain't going to finish this, but I'm trying to mess you up a little bit so you realize there's so much in the Bible that we don't study and don't know because we've been taught not to study. Are y'all there? So remember that God, after they had sinned, had put this prophecy out, and the prophecy is what the war was over. Remember, Jesus, the, uh, God said to, the, to Eve, I'm going to put enmity between you and the serpent, your seed and his seed. You think, no, you, no, we skipped over it. Oh, God, we skipped over it. What, let me tell you what we just heard. I'm going to put, the, the serpent's going to be after her seed. Right? Is that not what we heard? That ain't what the Bible said. The Bible said that your, the, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent 